All right, thanks for staying with us now. Sustainable SMEs are an essential component for Nigeria's economy to thrive because they can help to create jobs, boost economic growth, protect the environment, and improve social well-being. They are also more resilient to shocks and crises. Technology is a necessary um, tool for any kind of business, especially for SMEs in Nigeria, to thrive and compete in the global marketplace. It can help them improve efficiently and uh, productively, reduce costs, uh, reach new markets, and gain a competitive advantage. However, not all small businesses have been able to leverage the benefits that come with being a digital native. So tonight we're asking, what is the influence of tech in building sustainable SMEs in Nigeria? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the word 1-803-4663. All right, so quickly, um, NJ, since you are the tech people, mm -hmm. how important is um, tech in, build, in small businesses these days? Yeah, it's just like what I was, we were saying earlier. earlier yeah. It makes your business, it moves your business faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It helps you automate, digitalize. It helps for you to increase customer base and even have a track record of that in terms of reporting. It helps you make easier partnerships. You know, So it has brought forward a whole lot of things that used to be like a cake mm. and used to be like it has changed and revolutionized all those things and now you see um, what would take a business weeks and months to achieve now you take it in a day You're less done. than hours absolutely yeah so it has done a lot absolutely so let me bring in theresa understands the role of smes in evaluating or elevating rather and fast tracking development in Nigeria and Africa at large. This has fueled her passion to contribute tirelessly to supporting small and medium scale businesses with development strategies and technology infusion for business growth and sustainability. She is the head of strategy and operations at MindShift Business Solution and has three years experience as a business development expert providing strategic and innovative solutions that has helped businesses experience 70% increase in client base. That one is measurable. <laughs> and she's joined us live in studio. Hi, Theresa. Hi, Uwa. Are you Mother Theresa? <laughs> <laughs> no, Theresa is fine. fine. All right, so I mean, this, I like this idea that it's actually traceable. I be, or what they call it, um, scalable, and it is um, measurable, right? You know, sometimes you have business development experts. They come into your business. You can't even measure how much growth has happened in your business. So I like the fact that, so if I tell you to come into my business now, <laughs> Let me just give you, you let me just give you a warning. If I don't see that <laughs> I will call you out. <laughs> but that's, that's just uh, try to, to put the mood lighter. I mean, so um, we all know that tech is actually, well, I call it a new gold now. A lot of people are actually building different things around technology, making it, you know, um, even easier, ac more accessible, more, um, um, what's it called? The navigation, the user journey is quite easy these days. People are bringing lighter solutions, quicker solutions, things that are not so complicated as we used to know tech to be. So is there an excuse for any small business not to be um, thinking of infusing technology in their business today? Okay. Um, first of all, good evening. <laughs> and thank you, Owa and Angie, for having me. Um, so there's really no excuse, right? I feel like there's no excuse um, because... Just like you said, it is now easy, right? It is now easy to implement. They are now, you know, is more is it, you know, it has sort of been brought closer to everyone, such that you can actually find um, technology that can work for you where you are, whatever level of maybe expertise and all of that that you have. So there's really no excuse. Well, I mean, probably when you ask another question, mm -hmm. I'll share my thoughts on why I feel like you know some. SMEs are not embracing technology no, as they should. You can go ahead and just share that because if there's no excuse, I was going to just follow it up. We say, so why are people not, what is the, what's the barrier? Why are people not thinking in that direction? Okay, so um, two things, you know, that I'm, I'm just going to highlight. First is the fact that there's still, maybe we can call it a mental block in the sense that some people still think technology is far-reaching. So we said that, oh, it's now more accessible, but that's how we are looking at it. 
So some people still feel like this thing is hard, right? I don't really understand what's happening there and I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I think that's the first thing, that mental, mental block. block. Yeah, so that's one. And then the next might also now be close to um, the mental block. It can also be a, um, a challenge of finding the right tool. Hmm. Now, because of the interesting time we live in where you can literally Google anything and you can just say, maybe for example, let me use a CRM tool because I mean, most businesses, CRM is um, customer, customer relationship management, management tool. Yes. So maybe you're just like, what CRM tool can I use? And then trust Google to give you um, all sorts of no, options. No, 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 no. <laughs> and you know it now it now becomes a question of which one should i actually use mm. which one would fit my business which one would fit what i'm doing mm. because not all tools will give you the same offering mm -hmm. and trust me i don't think many business owners are interested in doing that whole research. especially i mean if it's a larger organization where they have a tech team that's a different conversation mm -hmm. but somebody that maybe they have just two staff and and they are generating revenue and they are okay and then the person like, oh, I want to, you know, utilize technology. And they start that process. They're like, you know what? I don't know what this thing I'm, I'm not doing again. So I think those are two major things that I feel like might be challenges to hmm. adopting technology. Interesting. Interesting. Um, well, you've said quite a bit. But um, my question will come to what are those challenges? What are those things? I know that you've said that they, they don't. And you've given some of the reasons. So... What, how do they move forward? How do you convince them? Because I'm also in, in the same line, and it takes a while. Like, it takes longer to close deals. And it's surprising that in Nigeria, it takes longer to close deals with bigger organizations. So organizations that you expect to understand the need for it, the importance in, the, in running of their day-to-day -day activities, you're expecting them to understand the need and then they just push it to the side. It almost takes so much longer between the time it takes to close a bigger deal that would land you, you know what I yeah. mean by a bigger deal? And you would have closed like 10 small deals. And eventually you're looking at that small deals as the ones that you use to run the operations of the company while you chase the bigger ones that get you actual the profit that you deserve as a company. Mm -hmm. Why does it take that long for them to... <laughs> I, I know, but I'm asking you today. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I would like to... Because we're here... What we're doing here is to educate people on what, the need and why they should. So I would like for you to actually be able to tell us why that happens and what they should do. How do, how do business... Um, you know, business um, people like you be able to convince them that there is a need for that? How, what are the steps you take? Okay, um, that's a really interesting question. And, you know, I just like to remember my experience, you know, working in the ed tech space. And <laughs> I know how, just like you said, you go to a school and you're trying to explain to them that this um, school management software is going to really make life easy for you. And they just feel like, they feel like, oh yes, I know, right? But I'm just not interested right now. Or, oh, it's expensive and things like that. So um, just a few things that I would highlight. First of all, also the method in which um, that solution is being communicated. So um, instead of maybe approaching this business owner and saying, oh, okay, this is what I'm offering you in that sense. This is my tech solution and all of that. You might want to show them a process in the organization. Show them what they are doing. Right, so um, and that way you are tailoring it to the exact operations they are carrying out, the exact services they are offering. Show them exactly what this tool you're offering is actually going to do for them. Well, what I mean in essence, let me let me use EdTech again because I've worked in EdTech for a while. So now using EdTech for example, so maybe you can just use the example of oh, imagine a teacher coming into class, maybe a class of 25 students for example, and teacher is calling each student name by name mm. to say they are trying to mark attendance. Now, look at... I just do the... Just put your... Or even in. before, as they are entering school, mm -hmm. you no. account for every student and you just you send know, it... In China, they, they have those things from the gate. Exactly. Just, the way Actually, you talk in, into your, or, or your company. 
the same thing. Mm. So now that way you're telling them that oh, normally your math class is not is not even enough. The teacher is saying no, the time is up and we're not done. And then you're still using like ten minutes to say you're trying to call everybody named. As in, do you get so relating it in that way to what they are doing and really showing them specifics. This is exactly what it will do for you. Just tailoring back to what you say about business development. Once people see any kind of ambiguity with what you're offering them, mm. they will just want to draw back. Especially when you want to collect their money. Especially me. <laughs> <laughs> so they will draw back. It's just like, ah, I, I, I get you. This thing is nice. But later on, when I have more budget, right? So that's relating it to so exactly what you're doing. Simplicity. Yes. Breaking it down to like, you know, like layman terms exactly. for businesses, they, 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 exactly. they now adopt it. Exactly. All right, so let me, let me go back to sustainability, right? And because we're talking SMEs now, they, um, according to World Bank, the statistics shows that about 600 million jobs will be needed by, I think it's 2030 now. Yeah, I think it's 2030. And the major employers of those labor will be SMEs, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, it, it tells me that you really cannot not pay attention, attention yeah, to SMEs, absolutely. right? So if we say we want to build sustainable SMEs, in your own um, understanding, right, what is sustainability for a business? What does it mean? Because, you know, we use these terms loosely, especially because now, if you say anything sustainability, and, uh, you can apply for grants, you and <laughs> give you money. So everybody say, ah, sustainability, but they don't really know what sustainability would mean in its real sense. So what would that mean? You know, from your own analysis, what does sustainability mean for a, for a small business? Okay. Um, interesting question again. <laughs> so generally, sustainability just refers to, you know, whatever resources is available, is available for a long time. In layman's English, is available for a long time, such that you're using that resource today will not affect the ability of a future generation, right? Your children, for example, to use that same resource. Now, bringing it to businesses in the very basic term is the fact that you can keep delivering on your brand promise like over time. And that even though you live in a volatile environment, mm -hmm. you can still maintain the standard of what you're offering and the profitability of your business, right? So those two things are always there. You are not, you know, you are not coming to a point where you have to now reduce your quality because you're like, oh, things are getting expensive. So sustainability is that ability to keep your business running, delivering on your promise, Making sure you still have money because, I mean, if you don't have money, you, if, you, if there's no cash flow, you still have mm. issues. So making sure that is happening, right? And then, you know, you now want to bring in things like ESG, making sure, you know, um, environmental, social and governance in terms of, oh, you're making sure you're probably running a secular economy or making sure that, you know, you're not violating any of those other principles. Mm. In, in a simple way, right? I like to see a sustainable business as a business that can outlive his founder. Hmm. I know that's probably taking it a bit far, hmm. but... It's not. <laughs> no, that's it's not, not but that is how it's supposed to be. Actually. Because that's why we don't have businesses. You, you see, yeah. because I like where you're going with it, because outliving the founder means that you have built a business. Actually. Like, I mean, I was listening to someone that said that if you cannot leave your business for 90 days, you're not in business. Don't call yourself an entrepreneur. Hey, I, 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 you are not an entrepreneur because you cannot not be there mm -hmm. so you must put in structures and the only way you can put in those structures it is through technology thanks for staying with us now if you just tuned in we're having so much fun discussing um influence of uh what's it called technology in building a sustainable business and we have theresa i call her mother theresa with us now if you just tuned in i'm sorry you can call us on 0702 are we calling today? No. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 I don't know. I'm so excited. So, I mean, like, now, practicality. I am a business, and I want to see Theresa come in to help me structure my business so that I can become a sustainable business and impact, um, I mean, then it put the influence of technology in that business. What's the first thing you do when you go into a business? How do you do the analysis? What do you do and all of that? Okay, um, so usually the first thing I look out for is I really want to understand the mind of the business owner. That's what I, I mean, that's my own personal approach. I want to understand the thought of the business owner. I want to understand what is driving the business owner. I really want to get into their headspace and see because that gives me more perspective to even see things they are not seeing at that point. So that's the first thing I'll usually do. Just have a chilled conversation, just asking you, how did you start? What motivated you? Why are you still here? 
you know, all of those questions. And then from there, I mean, there are tools I use, you know, to, there are different analyses I use, you know, to just, I mean, to also give me data. So I ask them certain questions that helps me also to sit deeper into where the business is. So that's actually the first thing I do. So after I do that, I now move then to having conversation with their staff, if they have staff, just to also hear their own thoughts about how things are done. And then I create um, like a roadmap. That's how I work. I create a roadmap. I can do maybe a three month or a six month roadmap and say, okay, this is what I can do for you. This is what will happen. This is what you should be expecting. And we have that. And I mean, even whether it's technology infusion or just basic advisory or, I mean, for some people you come in, you know, with the notion of doing one thing and then you see a lot of other things and you're like, okay, um, this is something that needs to be fixed if you want to. For example, now, an average business owner in Nigeria will be like, oh, I need grants or I need loans. Come and help me apply for stuff and all of that. And, you know, I'm like, oh, where's your records? And they're like, oh, we've your been writing it. Hmm. Or you even hear we've been writing it. Hmm. Or oh, it's some months are there, some months are not there. And I'm like, okay, first things first. We need to get your invoices system first before we even go for that. Because, I mean, if you, if you are still writing down, then there will be issues, right? Because it just... It's not traceable. Exactly. Yeah. So we're like, okay, let's set that up and just make sure all of those, you know, little, little things are fixed immediately. So I hope I've answered your no, question. No, you go ahead. Continue. I like the question, <laughs> the answer. So, so, it yeah. check, so it is based on the need of the business yes. that now decides where you start from. Actually. But, based, but you have done the normal uh, getting into the, the, yes. the head of the, the yes. owner. Yes, yes. I get you, I get you. And so one of the questions I, I would like to ask, because yes, um, is the potential, what are the, the barriers and the limitations that uh, SMEs face with the adoption of technology? Because there's a good side and there's a bad side. Hmm. Um, let's use ChatGPT as an example. A major fear a lot of people have with ChatGPT is that technology dependence, right, where, you know, people now sort of stop thinking in that sense mm. and really just allow ChatGPT to think for them and all that, you know, AI tools. And that's sometimes a fear. So some people are like, oh, I don't want to, um, in quotes, lose my creativity. No, yeah, let's, I mean, there's even the humanity, but I don't want to lose my creativity. I don't want to become like one of these people who... Cannot think. <laughs> in, in essence, right? So, <laughs> so that's, that's, that, I, I think that's one challenge people face. And then the one we talked about earlier, about knowing exactly where to start. And that's where, you know, having someone you can even speak to. Mm. I, you know, I, I, I like to put it as basic as, if you are not maybe a tech-savvy person, just have a friend. If you cannot even say you want to, you know, get a consultant or something, just have a friend that knows about tech tools and you can always ask this thing, what am I doing? What do I need to do, right? <laughs> All of that. But I mean, the honest truth is the business owner might not even know where they need technology. And that, that's really just it. So it now takes that external eye to be able to say, okay, this is where you need to start, right? And I don't want to say you know, it's expensive. I actually don't want to yeah, say that. I was that. coming there because small, small businesses will tell you that, eh, but this thing is actually very expensive for me. I can't afford it, you know. So what would you say to those people? Where are they trying to start from? Mm. Where are they, what kind of technology are they getting? I mean, technology is different, you know, for different industries. So for example, somebody in manufacturing now, they, you might be thinking, oh, they need some more expensive tools. But there's always... A start point there's always the baseline that you can say okay this is mm. where we can start from and I, I think it falls back to building your business with that mind that from the scratch you want to make sure that you're having systems automations it, it is it is it, 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 it it's it's a cultural thing it is you building that culture that okay so that even when you bring in a staff that may not even be tech savvy they can already see the culture and they're already stepping up right mm -hmm. so that's really where it starts from instead of looking at it from the point of cost because to be honest there's a lot of free options in fact many of these tech tools will give you a free version right mm -hmm. i'm trying not to mention names you know for <laughs> obvious reasons but many of these tech tools will give you a free version that you can start with mm, but and, you still need somebody to guide you on that yes version, so yeah. That, that's, really that's where you guys now come Exactly. In. But I, I was going to say that technology is, is actually great. I, I know a gym, all of us know the gym company that, you know, 
I was shocked when I registered and they told me that they don't do cash, they don't do nothing. Everything is just, I mean, like literally they've so automated it that you can go to any branch, you know, all you need to do is just flash your, there's a, a QR code oh, on, your, yeah. on your phone and you are, like you can go anywhere. So for, for, for that business, the people, they, they're not thinking of the regular traditional thing of, oh, maybe a, a staff is you know, doing all sorts of things and all of that. So, I mean, technology would help curb a lot of excesses because, again, you hear small businesses complain. You know, they complain about, oh, staff stealing from them and all of that, and they're not able to keep, especially for people that are into retailing, right? They're not able to keep stock of inventory. I, I, I had an older sister that had a massive poultry in Joss massive poultry now their business uh, it, it was there i learned that ah fear people <laughs> fear people they will twist the neck of the chicken yeah. like this and throw it across the fence wow. they would in fact ha ah, it's bad they would insert eggs women we insert eggs inside that place like maybe three four eggs you know apply it. that's how terrible you know the minds of these workers yeah. are they do all sorts of things they would bury egg inside this. So those kind of businesses, do you think technology can help them? Especially like maybe farmers, um, po um, people in the, in the agricultural Trust. chain. Do you think technology can help? Are there solutions for them? Absolutely, absolutely. There's actually a solution for, ah, I think it's livestock, not poultry. Um, she's my friend, right? And I don't know if it's okay to mention her name, but... I'm even her name is Adesi. Mm. Farm Speak. Yeah, that's the name of mm. her business. She has a um she has an app that, you know, I'm trying to remember the details, but I know it does something around measuring literally everything that is needed around the livestock farming, from what they should be eating, quantity they need to be eating it, to the temperature of where they are staying. Mm. She has that tool that measures all of that. And it is specifically for people in the agricultural space. And I know that as the last time we spoke, she was looking at expanding it to actually accommodate other kind of agricultural you know, practices. Mm. So, and that's just one. I know there are others, right? So this, and, and I know that she even has some you know, agreements with um, collaboration with Ogun State government at the moment. So these things are there. And to be honest, it's going to help because a lot of agricultural people, that's one of their major concerns. Ah, that's, stealing. Yeah. honestly speaking. And so even they lose that, a lot of, yes. of their harvest and all of that. Go ahead. Even not even just stealing alone. Even, you know, in terms of, for example, their animals dying because the temperature is not where mm. it should be. They, there are so many. And, I mean, agricultural space is really is a very dynamic space where anything can literally happen, right? And technology is really changing the game in agriculture. It's just that... I mean, as the general Nigerian thing, we're still, we're still, <laughs> we're still, we're still literally battling because I mean, if you've heard about this greenhouse farming and yeah. all of that, these are all technological, you know, advancements that have come into agriculture, Solutions, yeah. exactly, and that that are really changing the game. And we just need to be more intentional about adopting them and really now going to the grassroots farmers because I mean, at the moment, many of you know the farm produce and all of that still come from that end. Mm. So really going there and. I mean, it's just what it is. The things that are wasting can, can be prevented. But as with every other industry in Nigeria, <laughs> we're working in progress. We're working in progress. So it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Me, I have plenty of questions. I'm a businesswoman. <laughs> so for smaller businesses that are like, um, would I call them now? Because sometimes you, you see great business presence on Instagram. You see all of those things. And then... You probably chat them off. First of all, response time is horrible, you know, and all of that. I mean, like literally, how do you exp um, how do you um, advise those kind of businesses for their CRM tools? What kind of tools do they do? Because, I mean, you send a DM and it's taking forever to do. The person is not even responding, right? You call, maybe they eventually peak, and it's taking days and all of those things. And these things are not really great for businesses, right? And that's why me, I'm still a physical store person. My, my older sister is the one that she can live and breathe <laughs> online, <laughs> shopping. She doesn't need to go anywhere. Right now, one of her products is stuck. She has begged me now to go and help her, to go and help her check because she's calling them. They're not picking their calls. But, I mean, these are the things. We're, we're here now. A lot of people are embracing a lot more online shopping, online, all of those things. So how do you... Um, tell a small business that says, you know what, I want you to grow a sustainable business for your customer relationship management 
process is quite, um, what's it called, weak. How do you help those kind of businesses, you know, to help get better customer engagement? Okay, so um, the first thing is just leverage, you know, um, automated messaging at the basic level, right? That really just tells people, oh, um, based on maybe certain questions they ask, oh, hi, we're not here now at that basic level, um, we'll be back in XYZ time, right? So that's, that's really like the first layer of that. So across literally every social media platform, whether it's um, Instagram, WhatsApp, just have that layer of, so people don't feel like, you know, nobody's attending to me, right? Mm. I think that's one. Um, the next thing also will now be graduating from that to, I mean, for those who can, to having like a chat bot mm. that really just engages, right? So that's, I mean, that might not be something. Oh, she, he's the chat bot. <laughs> so this one, this one, look at me. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I said oh, that. It does. Auntie, Auntie. Yes, <laughs> like... <laughs> It I'm not. It's like, not, it's like an automated did assistant. Did that? Did that yeah. talk to you? Sorry. He actually ahead. does help. I know it helps. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> arguing with you people. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm, I, I get, right? I get, not everybody can just wake up and say, oh, I'm ready for that kind of, you know, yeah. Engage, um, investment, investment yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So just have that basic, um, you know, response and then be able to... I mean, as, as, a, as a practice, right? do the best you can to convert your customers from WhatsApp, Instagram, to having their data stored, mm. right? So just having whatever tool you eventually settle on, just make sure that you have their data stored properly. As that, that, that's just basically because now, the, the, the reason why I'm saying that is some people really just engage with customers. They send DM, they respond, they ship the product out. And, and that's, that's it. it. And they leave those data mm. in, those, in all of... So you have data in... Instagram, you have Facebook. data on Facebook, you have data on WhatsApp. No way to bring them together. Exactly. So that's just another basic level. I mean, that might not completely solve the issue of delayed response time. I've, I think I've mentioned what can mm. work at the barest minimum, but have making sure that you are galvanizing all those data into, if it's a mailing list, you want to convert them to fine and good, whatever system, just make sure that you know, you're storing the data and you're keeping the communication lines open. Mm. Because you can't be sending, hi, we've not heard from you on WhatsApp to so everybody sending you DMs. Mm. You can't also do that on Instagram, except, of course, maybe you have those three customers or something like that, mm. right? So there's a level where you'll be like, oh, if it is to have, oh, even if it's bulk SMS, we mm. can send to them. So just making sure that that, so that way they know that you're actually, you know, you are still there and they can come back, mm. right? So beyond, you know, what, I mean, the social media space is, in fact, between, I think, 2022 and 2023, grew by about 600 billion. That's 600 or 300 billion globally, right? Dollars globally. And just shows you how much people are shopping online, on, online platforms, right? Mm. So it just means that there's a lot of market there, but you don't want to be caught just responding to DMs and that's all. And you don't have a record of your customers outside all of those social media platforms that you're responding to them. Mm. So, Absolutely. Makes sense. Makes sense because again, remember when um, WhatsApp was down, Instagram was down. <laughs> oh, no. So which brings, which brings me to you know, as we are trying to wrap up now, what's the what's how important is every business owning a website, like especially a business that want to be there for a, a good number of years, right? How important is that owning that your own website? Extremely important. Extremely important. Like. It is something that the moment you start generating revenue, you start thinking about it. I, I really don't care what you're doing. Just start thinking about it, right? Because even if you cannot do it immediately, make sure it is in your plan. Over the next six months, we're going to have the website. Just like you said, if you're not interested in being there for the long time, then you might not need to consider it. But if you are, then it is just, it's just the it's right thing to do. Exactly. Mm, awesome. OK, so I think um, NJ. Mm -hmm. You see, the challenge me I have with the website, I'm coming back again. <laughs> oh, we're listening. Yeah? <laughs> um, how do we start to create real um, affordable solutions? Do you understand? Um, I might be able to afford a website to be built for a millionaire, but there's a small business out there that needs a website, but they cannot even afford to pay 100000 Or Do you understand what I'm saying? So. 
I believe in practicality. I work with people's budget, right? And I, I believe that every small business should be treated with its unique strength. If we truly want to solve the problem, if I am very passionate about small businesses. So if we really want to solve the problem of small businesses, we must meet them at their level, right? So how do we begin to bring these tech solutions at that level? Like create the tool, so it's a complete package. So we help you build a website, do this, do that, you know, just within your budget. You know, and what would that budget look like? Mm -hmm. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very, what's the word now? A very compounding question. But let me take a go at it. Um, to building, you know, um, affordable solutions. So th this is not necessarily their own website but they can actually be hosted on a third party platform. Mm. So that's an option that can be explored. And at the moment in Nigeria, we have organizations and you know, tech companies that actually offer that. So that's one level, okay. right? So that's the first thing. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's really the first thing. After that, you're now looking at, okay, are there, um, can you maybe get um, a developer that can actually work with you? And you guys can reach, you know, a consensus, right? That's another way to look mm. at it. So that, that's, that's really another way to look at it. Um, yeah, I, th I think those are two major things. So at the first level, you might want to start with what are those, those third-party platforms that allow me sort of host like... So you almost like you have a shop in their, sh in in their, their, shop. In their shop. Exactly. Yeah. And they are, they are quite a lot. Yes, they are quite a lot that mm -hmm. have that. Have, yes. The, 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 so over the years, I feel like solutions have... That, and that's one of the things that technology has done. Technology has opened up the space for everybody. Like, you have it, you have, the, you know how to do it, come and do it. Mm. Do it, let's see. And once you do it, and you, yours is better than what is existing, who is not ready to jump on mm. that? There are a lot of free websites, people hosting third party yeah. and all that. So there, there have been various avenues. The one we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention the name, but the one we were talking about the, uh, earlier, it's, it's that product although it's not well known in nigeria but has become is at the top but when it comes to pricing it's so much lower it's mm -hmm. so ridiculous that sometimes when we want to sell it as a company we're afraid to sell it because the clients will just look at it and be like are you sure you can deliver what mm -hmm. i want and you're like yes even more than the big ones that you already mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. so a lot more people like a lot more solutions and a lot more even technology companies are producing indigenous solutions. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's the best way to go because indigenous solutions means that it caters exactly to, to what our and yes. what <laughs> is within our environment. Absolutely. So it's not just pricing. Mm -hmm. They're looking at the environment because you use some of these products is produced maybe in China, in some of Asia and America and what have you. And also there are Africa. features that and do not really that don't yeah. you're looking at it and you have to almost ask okay do you know what take out this future yeah. does it help because with the cost is, because even our technology at this rate does not even support some of those features do you understand That's so but i think we've had a fantastic time thank you theresa thank you for having thank me you, NG. thank you by the way we're all blacking today <laughs> <laughs> we got now, the memo. Before we go, I'm sure you follow us uh, across all our social media handles at Waysho Africa. You can interact with us further, drop your comment, and most importantly, follow all the engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. It says, technology adoption is a contributor to business growth to save costs, reduce efforts, and get more customers this was from an unknown source. We'll see you guys on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.